Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Мы начинаем наш... Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Shall we begin our round table? I am uh, happy to welcome uh, the audience here, our panelists, uh, of course. We're looking forward to, he to hearing uh, interesting statements from them. The subject matter of medical liabilities is uh, a traditional subject matter under discussion at uh, legal fora in St. Petersburg. I am very happy that, uh, that there are so many familiar faces in the room. Today uh, we are going to discuss professional medical liability. Professional liability of medical staff in general, of uh, medical institutions. I hope that we will stay coarse and not veer off uh, the mainstream. Hopefully, uh, we could find a common denominator that would uh, bring together professionals from so many medical branches uh, that would lead us to a consensus uh, on medical liability, on remuneration for medical damage. I hope and uh, I believe we will find uh, quite a number of such uh, common issues that we will be able to identify criteria of uh, medical liability of uh, the medical profession. Last year we've been discussing uh, standardization and the standards uh, in um, the medical profession and medical services. Today I would uh, propose uh, tackling liability of uh, doctors uh, for the results of uh, their services. for the adequacy of uh, medical uh, competency that he owns. I hope we will be able to uh, discuss medical legal practices uh, as applied and as practiced in various countries. The advantage of our forum is that we are able uh, to bring uh, uh, in, in one round table practices from so many states and entities. So my request, uh, by request of the panelists, please be sh brief. You have uh, very limited time, 15 minutes at most for uh, every statement. Uh, the first uh, speaker on my list, the professor of the Rotterdam uh, University. The year 2013 is the year of Holland and Russia and the year of Russia in Holland. So it is highly symbolic that uh, we start our deliberations uh, with a presentation by uh, Mr. Dan Exter Andre. Oh, yeah. okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the kind words, and thank you for the introduction. The second uh, forum uh, I'm allowed to participate, which is a real privilege. I will keep it uh, short, as you, pro as you requested, and I will uh, speak a little bit slowly. What I would like to do for uh, this 15 minutes is of course a medical liability in the Netherlands. Um, I'm not going to do, discuss the entire framework, that's too boring. Um, I will give some highlights about medical liability in the Netherlands. And uh, I will give some uh, case, cases, some interesting cases. Some of them are recent. And I think these cases, these examples are open for discussion and uh, maybe we could discuss uh, what is the relevance uh, uh, to, let's say, Russia, uh, and how would we deal with such a uh, conflict. 
That is my um, intention for this morning. But please let me start uh, with some figures. As a lawyer, I found some data of, or I should work this way. Uh, it doesn't work. This one. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> This one, yes, sorry. Um, uh, this is what we found. So we, in the Netherlands, we do not have a database, a national database of accidents, of uh, liability uh, cases. So data are rather scarce. Uh, but this is what I found already a few years ago, 2009. It gives an indication how to deal with the quality of healthcare. We have, as you can see, more, uh, more than 1,700 un unnecessary death, avoidable death, unnecessary death in hospitals. There was a research in about 25 hospitals in the Netherlands over this year, and they found that there were about uh, 1,700 unnecessary deaths and more than 30,000 uh, unnecessary avoidable damages with the subsequent costs. Um, of course, there was a huge debate in Parliament, but also among the professionals, the health professionals themselves, questioning, and the main issue is about how to improve quality of health care. We have some legislation, yes, indeed, but we should improve the practice. And this was only of a few, let's say 25 of 100 hospitals in the Netherlands. So the actual figure uh, is uh, much bigger, uh, 2009. Uh, unfortunately, no recent data available. So this is um, for, for the setting of medical liability in the Netherlands. Let me briefly, before I start with medical liability, say something about the, um, the, the context. So as th this is not unique, but uh, in case of damages, in, in case of basic risk, they are covered by social insurance, social or private insurance. Uh, so the cost of damages are uh, being reimbursed or uh, uh, covered by the social security system. Um, and in addition, hospitals, it is not compulsory, but they may have uh, an insurance for this kind of uh, medical liability issues. It's expensive, but uh, it is available, and practically all hospitals are insured against these uh, private li uh, liability. Um, one issue, uh, and I only address one issue here, is the question how to deal with the information. What if the hosp uh, hospital of the health provider is being confronted with medical liability complaint and um, he has to inform the patient? He may not discuss fault, he may not discuss liability but, uh, with the patient, but he needs to provide some information because this is necessary for the, uh, for the treatment, further developments, etc. So there's a conflict. What kind of information am I allowed as a physician to share with a patient who is considering uh, a uh, medical liability claim? Just raise it. Um, one more to go, and then I uh, continue. Uh, of course, there is, I showed you the, the figures about unnecessary death. There is a quality system. There is a quality and a management system. We have some legislation, both dealing with the improving and securing and uh, guaranteeing the quality of health institutions, like hospitals, with a strong inspectorate supervising, and at, secondly, a strong system about the health professions licensing system. And here, the, the Medical Disciplinary Board is uh, an, uh, uh, one of the instru so-called instruments in order to improve and to guarantee the quality of the health care provided. These are public hearings, so it is, 
uh, and also aimed particularly a public issue, a public hearing, and therefore aimed in order to improve the, the quality of healthcare provided. Um, and the last one, but I skip it uh, due to time and reason. This is a kind of arbitration. Let's focus on uh, civil liability. In the Netherlands, civil liability can be either for tort or for contractual liability. I think that, uh, that is in more uh, legal systems quite common. Um, I will not discuss the details, but in principle it is about uh, the compensation of costs. And here, if I can see it, uh, it is fault. Particularly we have a fault-based system. A strict liability is only for uh, uh, medical devices being used. It, in principle it is a fault-based liability. And what is, uh, so there are several conditions, the liability formula, but what is important is the, uh, the unlawfulness, is the breach, breach of duty. What is a breach of duty? And this is particularly for the court to decide, uh, taking into account all the circumstances that are relevant. So what are the standards? What are the professional standards? And for this reason, we refer to the guidelines that have been developed by the professional associations. And I think that is uh, not, again, not unique in uh, Europe. Uh, let me see. Um, once liability has established, also here, then there is the defense of contrib contributory uh, negligence. Um, meaning that there could, this may uh, reduce the liability, at least the, the amount of provided uh, for liability. Um, there is the duty of, to mitigate uh, losses by the patient himself. Uh, the burden of proof, it's up for, uh, for the patient to prove that there is negligence. In specific cases, by exception, uh, there uh, can be made, and that means that uh, also the uh, reverse, uh, the, the evidence can be reversed. Um, and the rest of the time, I would like to discuss the contractual liability. Um, so we have tort law. When there's no contract, contractual liability in case of a contract with health provider or the health, uh, the, the hospital, um, we have the same standards. We use the same standards the standard of care, what is proper care. Again, this is a wide margin of discretion of the judge to, uh, to assess, but in principle being further developed implement, uh, defined by the uh, medical standards. Um, what I would like, I would, uh, discuss, would like to discuss two cases. Um, and, uh, a, a, a landmark ruling, uh, in a way, it is, yes, indeed, it is a landmark ruling, 2006, a few years ago, ago um, the Netherlands had a case at the Supreme Court in case a um, uh, severely handicapped uh, baby was born and uh, due to genetic defects. The parents already tested in advance, requested a genetic test, and uh, this was the reason for them uh, to, to challenge uh, the, the hospital indeed, because the hospital or the treating physician, he, uh, he misjudged the genetic test. And for them, that was the reason, so the birth of this child, uh, severely handicapped child, was a reason to start an action for themselves for wrongful, la for wrongful birth. And in uh, the same case, there was also a wrongful life uh, action. And this is quite unique, if I uh, am correct, that there is such a case in Israel and the Netherlands, we, the, these are the only countries who have accepted a wrongful life action. So the child represented, of course, claiming in a way uh, that I should not have been born. And this raises interesting questions about damage. What is the damage? What is the cause of damage? Is it due to genetic effect or is it due to the misinformed by the, by the, by the physician? So a breach of a standard of care. 
and also the compensation. What kind of compensation, compensation should be provided? Should it be a some symbolic amount or a substantive amount? Well, maybe that's open for discussion, but uh, the principle as such is quite interesting. Um, by the way, the wrongful life action was denied if in case of a claim for, uh, against the mother. Wrongful life was accepted in case of a claim against the hospital. Um, so remedies, more or less I uh, already refer to that. What are the possibilities in, in the case uh, medical liability has been uh, established? Um, of course, compensation, but also uh, reparation, but full compensation. Compensation of losses, of economic losses, but, so pecuniary losses, loss of income, but also at the same time uh, loss of non-pecuniary uh, damages. And here, again, a second case, a last one, I would like to uh, uh, share with you is what um, uh, is there a possibility of non-pecuniary losses for a comatose patient? Non-pecuniary uh, uh, losses or damages is only in case of pain, of suffering. But the comatose patient, he doesn't suffer. So the hospital claimed there is no reason for this kind of non-pecuniary uh, uh, compensation. The Supreme Court had to deal with it. No, not yet, not, not the, the district court. And district court said whether or not the patient is uh, aware of suffering or is suffering is irrelevant for non-pecuniary losses. What is decisive is a uh, violation of his integrity, a violation of his private life. And for that reason, non-pecuniary losses of a comatose patient has been accepted. Remarkable. So that brings me to the final conclusion. And if I'm, I hope I'm within my time. Um, we have a discussion, of course, also here and in other countries, medical liability. And the issue, is there an, uh, the risk of defensive medicine? Again, uh, statistics are not available. And of course, such major cases like the Baby Kelly case about uh, a wrongful birth will create uh, momentum and uh, concerns for a medical doctor that this may cause med uh, a risk of defensive medicine, but that is uh, not proven. What is more important is that there are, uh, these issues, these examples, give uh, or initiate the need for guidelines and uh, more effective protocols, how to behave, how to act in such more or less similar cases. So if we have these kind of guidelines, which are more or less available yet, then this may, it is assumed, it is assumed that this may uh, the, decrease the risk of defensive medicine. Um, what I didn't mention, but it is also interesting to know that the popularity of the uh, liability insurance, the legal assistance insurance, is uh, very important. And this uh, uh, also uh, uh, encourages out-of-court settlement. So that there is the, the not an uh, intention, not an, uh, yes, not an increasing uh, number of uh, cases of uh, claim culture, so to say. For the moment, I would like to focus and to finish for this one. Thank you. Спасибо большое, профессор Денекстер. Мы right. So I think that we leave time for questions and answers at the end of our session. After all the presentations are made, thank you very much. Uh, it seems to me that. Uh, uh, problems similar to the ones you discussed uh, in connection with the birth of children suffering from genetic diseases, uh, typical of the French uh, judicial practice, and we'll be able to discuss that a bit later. Allow me to give the floor now to the next speaker, and we'll talk about the Russian Federation. And the next speaker represents a law company, Ross Medical Salting, that is uh, involved in uh, the practice and the uh, 
um, uh, uh, they provide um, legal services uh, um, in the field. Uh, with the help of them, with Ross Medical Consulting, we are able to organize this uh, roundtable, and we are most grateful uh, to them for that. So, Alexei uh, Gorinov will uh, describe the uh, issue of uh, medical responsibility and uh, liability in Russia. Well, thank you, Sergei Alexandrovich. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, when I was getting ready to the presentation today, I remembered uh, uh, what um, ancient people used to say, wise people, uh, they used to say that the ones who saves just one life saves the whole world. Today, we're talking about professional liability of medical doctors who over their whole life must be dedicated to their profession, uh, to their vocation. They save life and health. And uh, on the professionalism of just one medical doctor, lives and health of hundreds and thousands of patients depend. So when we qualify in the legal form the actions of the medical doctors, we should always remember the price paid by the doctor to save the life of children. The uh, doctor who takes this burden um, for himself for the whole life. It's the responsibility and liability of special subjects who get uh, uh, authority um, authorized by the state uh, to interfere into the private life of persons, to safeguard their health and life through uh, their application of medical methods of interference. In law, these are defined as medical intervention. If we proceed from the overall theory of liability, professional liability of medical doctors is just a variety of social responsibility and liability. Genesis of it starts with the doctor and compliance with the law on health protection of citizens of Russia. Uh, um, the medical uh, doctors, um, graduates, uh, um, uh, give an oath and they promise to be true to their vocation, uh, to do everything possible to treat uh, patients, uh, to care for patients, and be always ready to provide medical help. From the moment the um, medical uh, doctor receives a diploma and then gives the oath, he becomes a subject uh, of law. And that means he has to be true uh, to the um, words of the oath and follow the professional standards of conduct. And uh, uh, the doctor also has the liability to comply with the requirements of Article 73 of the federal law on health protection in the Russian Federation. This norm um, envisages the following. Medical staff is to carry out uh, their work and complies with legislation on the basis of the principles of deontology and ethics and provide medical health in compliance with their qualifications, their uh, job instructions, and their uh, job responsibilities. Uh, thus, the professional liability and responsibility of doctors is just one of the uh, types of social responsibility, which is uh, um, predefined by the wish of the doctor to comply and by the uh, norms of enforcement. So this is a classical norm of legal liability. For many reasons, it happens so that uh, there is a rather negative attitude to medical doctors nowadays. Public opinion um, insists that doctors have to act uh, within the strict uh, framework of standards and uh, when the doctor deviate, uh, the doctor can be held liable. Now, this approach, which recently finds support, um, is um, uh, thwart with some danger for the subjects of the system of uh, legal relations and for the whole system of public health. Allow me to de demonstrate it in my presentation. The um, legislation of the Russian Federation has a wide range of instruments uh, which make it possible to hold um, um, medical doctors liability. And there is criminal liability, of course, among others. Representatives of the uh, St. Petersburg Law School have done quite a lot in order to examine in detail different types of offense and uh, um, particularly heterogenic um, uh, types of offense in the medical sphere. And uh, 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 in uh, one of the books, um, uh, Dr. Meniskova, uh, uh, there is, uh, uh, we can find three types of uh, criminal guarantees for the protection of health of Russian citizens. The guarantee in the safety and security sphere, a guarantee of the medical uh, health provided, and the guarantee associated with the actual uh, health provided. Um, these are um, including different things uh, such as uh, necessary death and avoidable death, um, non-care, um, uh, many 
uh, crimes in this field um, actually uh, typical of the time and the criminal cases with all of that quite often are accompanied with the dispute um, in the field of private law when the victim wants to get uh, damages uh, covered for the health uh, damage and uh, Russian civil um, law allows to protect the interests of the patients applying the article 59 of the civil code uh, the, the, this is um, uh, taught and uh, the, the norms of uh, contract uh, liability annually the number of medical cases uh, actually has been increasing and uh, the compensation paid out uh, um, getting much, my, um, much higher um, and we need to look at the experience of foreign jurisdictions the United States of America for example where the doctors uh, um, held um, liable um, for medical um, mistakes and uh, malpractice um, uh, are quite common. For many years, there have been specialized legal practices in the United States which work uh, exactly in the sphere of malpractice. Malpractice, um, that is, uh, as we know very well, uh, the sphere which uh, provides um, um, compensations for the medical doctors. In 1997, there was a movie um, uh, by uh, Coppola, directed by Coppola, uh, dedicated to this particular issue. In this uh, film, a student, a young man, um, a graduate of the School of Law, uh, decides to work in order to earn some money in a law company. His mentor is uh, um, um, a defense counsel uh, who is not quite successful. They go to hospitals, they visit them, they talk to wards and uh, uh, talk to patients, uh, making sure that these sign um, uh, the uh, different documents that actually protect the interests of these two in the court. But if we forget this film and go back to the practice, we will see that what we can see in the movie actually complies with reality. The practice of the judicial prosecution in the United States is great. Well, of course, the number of uh, claims uh, um, is not that big, and uh, the, the, the uh, cases uh, um, the hearing takes a lot of time. Uh, the insurance of liability is very expensive, and the emotional stress is very heavy. And all this is a heavy burden for the medical community. And instead of uh, uh, and then, um, in the field of prevention, uh, the um, uh, patients uh, come across another problem. 48% of doctors of this public medical institutions and private institutions in their professional work very often uh, apply the so-called protective medicine, which has already been mentioned by Professor Exter. Uh, this medicine be de can be decide, de described in the following way. It's the practice of um, um, administering different types of interference with without uh, um, uh, urgent need. And uh, uh, the, uh, this um, preventive medicine has two specific forms. One form is the form of reinsurance, and uh, this is the, uh, associated with the additional unnecessary medical services in order to prevent uh, claims and in order to get evidence in advance indicating that the doctor completely uh, followed uh, all the standards. The other form is the form of avoiding risks, and uh, the doctors, as a result, uh, intentionally uh, do not take part in the medical interference and intervention of uh, a particular risk uh, which might entail um, uh, adverse uh, consequences for the medical doctors. And avoiding that, uh, doctors avoid um, claims. And uh, checks in a healthcare company um, uh, during its survey discovered that this type of medicine, preventive medicine, leads to in, uh, rather negative economic consequences. For example, the uh, um, public costs increase, and this uh, growth of costs is defined not just by interference. Um, um, every dollar, according to six is out of four in the United States, is, is spent on unnecessary methods of treatment, uh, which are assigned, administered by the doctors, just in order to avoid uh, medical disputes in court. Um, some examples from uh, midwifery in the States. According to the, to the agencies in the States, one of uh, three children is uh, 
born as a result of the cesarean, and the, uh, there is 53% growth of cesarean in the United States, and 38% of uh, the cesareans are carried out just in order to safeguard uh, doctors against uh, claims. So on the basis of statistics of the Central uh, for Medical Statistics, we can see that uh, um, uh, cesarean um, uh, costs uh, $5 million annually for the United States. The increasing growth for patients of costs uh, is also an element of preventive medicine. And this is also um, associated with unnecessary medical interventions. Uh, two surveys in the United States in 2010 demonstrated that over 73 percent of medical doctors uh, uh, make decisions on the basis of uh, um, uh, their um, um, attempt to avoid claims. What are the negative consequences of this type of medicine? The uh, medical help is not that accessible to some of the groups of the population. 76% of the doctors who took part in the survey say that this protective or preventive medicine actually leads uh, to the limitation of access because the patients with a high degree of risk uh, obviously present a certain uh, threat or danger for the medical doctors. So there is a high risk uh, for of claims and some of the uh, doctors intentionally try to avoid uh, these difficult uh, pa patients, and uh, the high-risk uh, group uh, patients actually increase the um, insurance premium, and the doctors try to avoid that because the premium is usually no less than 10 percent of the um, uh, insurance itself. And uh, then uh, the uh, slow introduction of the practice of the new medical technologies is another problem of that responsibility and liability for risk associated with the new technology is very often much more important for the medical doctors than the considerations of health. Um, many doctors uh, recognize that they intentionally uh, slow down the process of the implementation of new technologies because they're afraid of disputes and claims. And two more consequences that are quite important. First, uh, uh, teaching at the schools of medicine of um, uh, preventive and protection med medicines is a standard of practice. Um, uh, thus, instead of clinical thinking of medical doctors, um, and uh, uh, complying with the legal norms, uh, performance uh, comes in place. And then uh, the number of doctors uh, is reduced in the risky spheres of medicine, resuscitation, anesthesiology, uh, surgery, ob um, obstetrics. And thus, gynecologists, thus, this experience shows uh, that uh, the strengthening and the um, consolidation of the rules does not always bring about positive practice. And uh, it is quite obvious that the negative liability in relation to medical staff uh, demonstrates a rather negative impact on the medical sphere in general and has a negative impact on such constitutional values as life and health of uh, humans. Two days ago at the plenary session, um, Medvedev spoke about the need uh, to uh, consider mistakes of mistakes of foreign jurisdictions um, as a lesson. I think for our uh, system, this experience of the United States is most important. I also would like to share with you a very interesting observation, which was obtained in the process of this uh, of a survey carried out by the Canadian Association Protecting Medical Staff. The survey shows that there are no ideas systems regulating uh, medical liability, systems that could be easily implemented in any legal system. And this is associated with a strong impact on the local, social, and uh, legal uh, specifics. But nonetheless, there are some universal approaches or principles that provide positive results and lead uh, to the uh, professional um, improvement of uh, the doctors. Uh, the experience of Sweden and New Zealand should be mentioned as positive because the, the systems there recognize to be as the most progressive. The experience of these countries shows that this process of um, um, uh, holding the doctors uh, uh, liable should not be built on a conflict between the doctor and the patient. Moreover, it might seem surprising, but the patient and the doctor, even after a doctor makes a mistake, should not be um, on, the, on different sides of the barricade, um, being a plaintiff and a respondent. Uh, sometimes the um, the exception of the fault, <clears throat> the recognition of it, makes it uh, possible to reduce the overall number of claims. Moreover, it makes it possible to retain positive relationship between the doctor and the patient, because we understand that even a very experienced doctor, for objective reasons, independent on him, uh, can make a mistake. 
uh, leading to um, uh, undesirable consequences. Moreover, a patient gets full information about his uh, health because doctors within the systems are not afraid uh, to declare uh, mistakes made, and the professional community of doctors and the public health authorities get truthful information for statistics analysis and for um, taking organizational measures in order to prevent mistakes in the future. In order to implement this uh, opportunity in Colorado in the United States, special norms are introduced which exclude the possibility of using in court explanations and, uh, um, um, the, 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 and uh, excuses of doctors. Some of the states, including Florida, Nevada, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Vermont, went even further. They uh, made medical uh, organizations uh, um, uh, inform uh, medical uh, patients in case there is um, a fault, in case there is a mistake. The analysis of positive and negative experience of the regulation of medical liability makes it possible to define the specifics that will be considered when we think about the improvement of the uh, system of medical liability in Russia. It is necessary to, to continue with the um, um, uh, promotion of the practice. Um, it is necessary to strengthen the authority of the professional organizations, uh, and it's necessary to uh, provide the medical associations with the uh, authority to uh, um, really to, to uh, hold uh, the medical doctors liable. And as for the compensation of uh, damages, again, it is necessary to uh, remember that it is possible to avoid uh, holding an individual doctor viable. We're talking here about the um, uh, the mandatory system of insurance of medical doctor of uh, medical patients, and uh, this is being discussed. Uh, then um, alternative uh, um, uh, dispute resolution methods, uh, pre-trial mediation, um, and um, uh, arbitration uh, should be um, used in this context. And I would like to thank the organizers of the forum and the Minister of Justice uh, to uh, be able to discuss these very important issues of medical law at the forum. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexei Mikhailovich. That was a most interesting presentation, uh, most interesting and uh, rather, rather gloomy picture drawn by you. Uh, uh, responsibility, liability, and the impact that liability has on medical practice. Uh, I just hope that our discussion today helps um, us uh, um, uh, to consider these mistakes. And so thank you so very much uh, for uh, your discussion of the prospects and the mistakes. Allow me to give the floor now to Andrei uh, Yurin who is uh, Deputy Minister of Public Health of the Russian Federation. For many years, uh, he was the head of the um, Fund for uh, Mandatory Medical Insurance, and he is a well-known expert in the field of medical law and organization of uh, public health. Good afternoon. In all probability, the uh, podium of the St. Petersburg Economic Forum is probably becoming the main venue in the Russian Federation where they start discussing the uh, issues of medical law, including uh, very uh, urgent themes that we have been just discussing. I don't remember that lately in the Russian Federation At this level, uh, similar themes uh, would be discussed, and probably that's very good that now we have come to it, because lately in the Russian Federation, some significant laws were approved regulating the industry of providing medical aid in the Russian Federation. Essentially, these are three important a law so that a circulation of medicines, uh, obligatory medical insurance and fundamentals are on protection of the health of citizens. And the actualized legislative base, which uh, has appeared today, requires, uh, requires further steps in this field. In the last law, in the law on the fundamentals of protection of the health of the citizens, there are direct norms that fully comply with the theme of our today's roundtable, and they are related 
with the draft law which was published on the site of the Minister of Health for the discussion by all those who are interested on mandatory insurance of the patients in case medical aid is provided. Uh, as it is usual when some uh, such draft laws are discussed, commonly the character of discussion always requires uh, just uh, the certain criticism, but not uh, any constructive proposals. So I would like to tell you in advance that the Ministry is uh, planning to receive as many opinions as possible so that it uh, would become a working document, if possible. I think there are several elements in this law which can be discussed, and we can agree or disagree with them. For instance, there is a norm in this draft law stating that the decision on the recognizing the case as an insured case, a non-insured case, is taken by the commission that is set up in the subject of the Russian Federation and comprises the representatives of the authorities uh, in the sphere of healthcare, medical community, and insurance bodies. We might discuss whether this commission is necessary or not, or probably that competence should be delegated to the insurance company. The next element that can also be discussed is the question, uh, what insurance company should insure this uh, liability? Should it be some insurance medical organization which is not associated with mandatory uh, medical insurance, or probably this might be the same organization that works in the system of obligatory medical insurance and works with the same medical institutions. Uh, since we speak about obligatory medical insurance, these functions can be performed by territorial funds. So the themes that can be discussed uh, are presented here. And of course, the principles of insurance and determination of uh, great amounts of the insurance tariffs for those medical institutions in which such cases will be recorded, whether we proceed in this way or in a different way. In any case, probably the tariffs would be higher for those medical institutions in which such cases have been recorded. Our present-day practice of application of the protection of the rights of the patients and rendering or reimbursement of a certain damage related to provision of the medical aid Today is uh, mainly based on the legal proceedings or as uh, pre-trial proceedings, and such practice is available, and the colleagues uh, are actively participating in the process. It is clear that uh, while our uh, civil society becomes more mature, uh, such uh, insurance, uh, the need for such insurance will increase. So I would like to ask all those who attend this conference and just those who are interested in these themes to participate in the discussion of the draft law. We have some time to finalize it and take into account different opinions and we'll welcome all these opinions and we'll accept them. It is quite clear that uh, the, in the community the trend is like that. On the one hand, the society becomes more demanding and more literate, the education level increases, but on the other hand, the society is becoming aged is aging at the beginning of your life and at the end of your life. You know that we are currently recording uh, another criteria of living birth. That also requires additional medical aid, and these factors will enhance uh, the topicality of these themes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrei Vladimirovich. 
I think that we have to respond to the summons which we have heard from Andrei Vladimirovich. The also, as St. Petersburg State University is also read, uh, ready to make its own contribution to the discussion of this draft law, because for some years we have been implementing the draft, monit uh, draft uh, monitoring of law enforcement, and under this project it is planned to discuss the current laws, draft laws, federal laws, and other regulatory acts. We have a special site on the portal, uh, Legal Russia, monitoring law, legal rule, and I think that under this project we'll be able to involve in the discussion of this law and other laws which are prepared in the sphere of healthcare and in other spheres in this country. Thank you very much, Andrei Vladimirovich. And now I give the floor to the next speaker. This is a representative of Israel, representative of Haifa University, Professor uh, Oren Asman, who will highlight on the responsibility of doctors and medical staff in respect of the, uh, taking into account the practice of his state. Please. Oh. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, first, I'm happy to greet you on behalf of the World Association for Medical Law uh, Executive Committee and also the uh, uh, Education Committee. And we're very happy with any gathering that is local, or regional, or international that strives to promote the discussion and deliberation in the fields of health law and bioethics. Um, especially, we're happy with this gathering and we would like to thank the organizers and the Ministry of Justice uh, we've seen several sessions regarding our field of interest, including forensic assessment, a very important topic that was dealt here on the international level, and this very session that we are in now. Um, before I begin with my topic, which may uh, illuminate some different aspects of uh, medical liability, I would like to refer to some of the uh, things that were said by my colleague from the Netherlands, especially regarding the uh, concept of wrongful life. This is an example uh, from Israeli uh, law where Supreme Court many years ago in the 80s accepted the philosophical, bioethical, legal approach that a child that was born into sufferable life can sue himself for his own damages, which is being alive but not being well. This created a big, uh, I'd say, financial insurance-related problem because if a child is still a minor, then you start counting the time for his lawsuit to not be uh, valid anymore only when he's 18. So that means that each of these laws or law cases could be presented to the court up to 25 years after the alleged negligence has been performed. That's a huge risk management problem if you have to wait 25 years before you know that you're not going to be sued. I'm relating to that because a few months ago, the Israeli Supreme Court changed this precedent and now it is not possible anymore to sue for wrongful life. Did they do it for philosophical reasons? Perhaps. Did they do it because there were several committees discussing the crisis of medical negligence in Israel? The crisis, maybe not crisis, the problems relating to medical liability and its costs and how to reduce it and how to better manage the risks? Perhaps. This changes a lot because most of the medical negligence cases are related to obstetrics and gynecology, to birth. So, and the sums are quite high in these cases. So just to show how one little decision of the Supreme Court may have serious legal, financial, and insurance-related influences for the future uh, to come. And already we are discussing what to do with those who did not know they will not be able to sue 
in 25 years. So now they are given seven years to be, to, for the parents to sue on behalf of their child because the child cannot sue for himself. So this is one example uh, that I thought I should relate to. So in the next 12 minutes that I have, I would like to discuss the legal responsibilities of senior healthcare managers. And it may not be directly related to the big sums of money that we see in each of the big medical neg negligence cases. But I believe this is a very important topic because it has a lot of influences on risk management, on the way the medical system is working, and maybe a little glimpse into the way that the judges and the courts look at behaviors of healthcare systems trying to standardize those systems or to decide whether certain actions were considered or should be considered as negligent or not. So the rationale of this presentation is the following. It's, I need sunglasses, I need glasses it seems. Um, so actions of managers or department heads, heads, people who are senior in the healthcare systems uh, they're presented into various legal or quasi-legal uh, scenarios. Quasi-legal is, for instance, a disciplinary hearing. It has legal effects, but it's not a regular uh, court. Now, in order to decide if a manager or a director was performing his work in a reasonable manner, the tribunal has to look for what is the right or standard of care for a manager. And that may be a bit different than the standard of care for the regular doctor or healthcare provider. And the question is, where do you derive this standard from? How do you find out what should the good or the reasonable director do? That, that's a big question, and we should ask that because courts make those decisions. So what do they base their decisions on? Um, so, if we look at the different um, cases or legal or quasi-legal proceedings that relate to senior healthcare managers and professionals, we can see different kind of cases or different kind of legal uh, fields that are involved. One would be administrative law. Just as an example, we had a case um, that went to the Supreme Court of Justice, the High Court of Justice in Israel a few months ago. A psychotherapy institution was um, suing uh, the CEO of the health ministry, he's you know, an official, because he set some ground rules as to which institutions could perform teaching and qualification for psychotherapy. And those who are not um, seen as the ones who can do it, people who went to study there could not start working in the public health sector. So this went to the Supreme Court. So this is not going to cost money to the system, but this is one of the kind of cases that could go into court, and where you're a, a senior healthcare provider or official, you may anticipate even Supreme Court rulings on your behalf. By the way, they said that he was reasonable with his requirements. Um, labor law. The mayor of Tel Aviv who is also in charge of one of the institutions in Tel Aviv that is a medical institution, decided to uh, um, freeze the work of one of the senior doctors there who was uh, on call 24-7 at one of the times they called him. They said, we need you ASAP to go three hours drive to another city. He said, no, there's somebody else who should do it. Uh, there's no reason for me to do it. And he was suspended. And he went to labor court and said, this is not a reasonable decision of the mayor. Again, it's not a health care provider, but he's in charge. So this doesn't cost money, but this is one of the things that can go into court. Now we're moving on to those who are more relevant to liability in the sense that we know it. So we got damages claims, civil law. Most cases in Israel, you do not see the name of the manager of the hospital. He's not mentioned in it. He's not one of the claimants. Potentially, he could be. Potentially, the management of the institute 
could bear direct liability for not acting in a way that will allow the doctors to provide the best care. But it's rarely used for now. Just wait and we'll see probably some change. Um, there could be disciplinary proceedings uh, for any healthcare provider, including managers. I'm going to give you some examples soon. And in rare cases, and this is what I'm going to focus on, we will also have criminal proceedings regarding senior healthcare providers. Now, although it's not directly related to paying money, it could be very much related uh, to that in the end. So here are some cases. A hospital manager was convicted of neglecting those under one's supervision. It was a, uh, a hospital near, near Jerusalem uh, with uh, people on the autistic uh, spectrum that were treated quite harshly uh, by uh, a part of the staff. The manager was not involved directly, but once he learned about potentially uh, having uh, some of his uh, patients being harmed, it seems that he took too long to act and may have not acted in the proper manner to find out what is really happening and to stop it if it's really happening. Now, this was a criminal case just uh, decided a few months ago, and now the manager is waiting uh, for his uh, you know, punishments, probably not going to be imprisonment, but something uh, of uh, you know, working for the uh, uh, society or something like that. Um, now, we still haven't seen any civil cases of the families of those people that were harmed in this case. But even though we haven't seen it, just think about how it looks in the media. Just think about what kind of damage is caused to the reputation of a hospital when the manager is standing criminal trial and it takes eight years you know, until the case is over. So he's paying his personal price for sure and the hospital may not be as stable when the hospital manager is not working now and you need to make changes and so on. So some of the damages that are caused to the system are not just directly about the money they have to pay in compensation, but are related to organizational changes that occur when such a case begins. Another case, hospital manager and vice manager found allegedly guilty because this is not the, the, the criminal case, but it's a cause of death investigation. If there is a death that may have been caused by a certain crime, you can perform by a judge an investigation. And he can decide whether or not to uh, have an order of, um, yeah, to, uh, to issue a prosecution order. Uh, this was a patient who committed suicide in a hospital. The question was, should the managers of the hospital be aware of this risk in the hospital. And the judge said, well, they may have been uh, negligent. They paid um, 50,000 euros out of their own pocket, I mean the manager, to sponsor their legal protection. Not because they're not insured, but because to their understanding, the lawyers provided by the insurance company are not top line or top notch. And a hospital manager usually doesn't want to be taking the chance with being convicted of a criminal felony. Um, there are different other scenarios. I'm not going to go into all of these. Uh, but there are different cases. We had one case of a, of a manager of a hospital that was convicted in six different crimes. Um, committed suicide. That was almost 12 years ago. And later, his sister went into criminal court asked to appeal on his behalf, and he was acquitted of five of the six uh, criminal charges. Well, too late for him, of course, but uh, just to show you that sometimes the criminal cases are taken very, very harshly uh, by the professionals. Now, when we talk about standards, and I know I have only three minutes, so I'm gonna go into, cut into the chase. The courts usually talk about, if you're a manager, you should assume personal responsibility. You have to take responsibility for what happens in your hospital. You cannot hide behind, I didn't know, I couldn't have known, and so on. That's one thing that is very strong in those cases. The other thing is, you have to involve yourself in the work of your workers. You have to be more in the field. Question is, 
to what extent am I going to micromanage everything, right? Um, another thing um, <laughs> is not here, so I don't remember. But, you know, the idea is you have to be a very proactive manager. You have to think about the risks that are potentially going to happen and try to avoid it up front. But will that cause a chilling effect? Am I going to call the Ministry of Health for every little thing that happens in my hospital? So again, we're not clear as to what is exactly is the managerial uh, standard. Now, if the court needs to find out what is the standard that we anticipate a manager of a hospital to use, then probably we can ask him about his own ways of thinking as a manager. Or we can ask other managers of other hospitals. But perhaps different hospitals would have different standards because they have different sizes and different structures. So again, where is the standard learned from? We can ask experts to help us. But experts on what exactly? Should it be public health administration professors from the academy? Should they know the standards of a manager? Are they practical managers or professors? Uh, should it be business administration professors? Th these are real questions. Um, another question would be, um, can the judge himself use his own common sense and life experience and make decisions regarding the standards required of a manager? And I have to say that they do it. They do it all the time. You read the court decisions, you can find out the narrative of the case decision. And you can see who influenced the judge more. Who is he quoting more, directly or indirectly? The prosecution or the defense? So what do courts consider, to sum up? They look at the potential of harm, but not necessarily focus on the harm that was caused. Because this is a criminal case. It's not about the damages. It's about the potential of harm. It's about breaching some sacred uh, uh, covenant between the doctor and the patient, if you will. To what extent is the offense grave or, or harsh? What are the circumstances of the case? That's always true. What is the role and the duty of the defendant? The higher you are, the more we expect you to behave in a manner that represents your level. All right? And to sum up, they talk about public trust in the healthcare system. If such a higher high up person was not committing his work the way it should be, what does it say about the healthcare system? You can see that in many of those court decisions that relate to the uh, liability of uh, healthcare managers and their responsibility. So to sum up, most of the cases against managers are not damages cases. They're either criminal or procedures of uh, uh, the uh, procedures of disciplinary hearings. It's not about the money. Sometimes you could have a little bit of money that is decided in a criminal case, a few thousand euros for each of the persons that was harmed. But it's not a financial risk the way I see it. It is more a risk for the whole association and organization that its reputation is going to be harmed and its whole system may be shaken if the managers are going to be sued for their uh, misdemeanor and uh, behaviors. Also, I'm saying that potentially those criminal cases could be used in a civil case. If I've already proven that the uh, standard of the principal or the manager was not good enough, then I can connect it directly to my civil claim and say, look, the damage was caused by his negligence. It was proven in the criminal case. Now I don't need to work hard. It was already proven to the highest degree possible in the Israeli legal uh, system. So I would sum up with that and say just one more thing. I created this slide that tries to explain to myself who is doing insurance for what and for whom and for what institute in my country. Nobody really knows. There are different systems, different kinds of insurance systems. And lately we've discussed that, that if managers, if doctors, if other healthcare providers would be more aware of what is covered and what may not be covered 
under their insurance, they may just go home and stop working. So we have a lot to do in this field as well. So thank you for your time, and I bring you this back. Thank you. Thank you so much for your very informative statement. We have uh, already mentioned that we would like to discuss a measure of responsibility between the doctor as a person and uh, uh, his institution. However, what you've uh, been telling us uh, is a new strain in our discussion, which is extremely valuable. Thank you again so much. Our next speaker is uh, Professor William Simons. Professor of the Star Tartu University. He is uh, very privy to the international practices and Russian law. I believe he is going to give us uh, a comparative analysis uh, of a sort. Please. Uh, thank you so much uh, for this possibility to speak before the audience. I will try to be brief. We have very little time. Uh, there have uh, been uh, so much said about the subject matter already. I uh, am trying uh, to figure out uh, ways to integrate what I have just heard from you uh, into my intervention. There's been uh, said here something about uh, the about uh, the three the acronym of three letters. which has to do with uh, the assessment of medical uh, results or something like that. This is an institution, it's a tool which uh, can provide uh, for a um, person or institution concerned what uh, does uh, it uh, take uh, to uh, receive medical treatment, what result one can expect from uh, medical treatment. I believe this is uh, Impact assessment would be a correct translation into English. This term is used in the European countries, so it's impact assessment. Another acronym of three letters, ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution, very well. That stands a pre-trial uh, means of uh, dispute resolution. Which uh, may have different outcomes for the uh, stakeholders of uh, uh, litigation. Some things uh, have a monetary measure to them and uh, do have an expression uh, in monetary terms in the decisions of courts or otherwise. Last year, I had an uh, opportunity and pleasure to speak before you about the transparency of the process. <laughs> On top of things that have a monetary measure, there are so many uh, uh, intangibles uh, like social impacts, uh, reputational uh, losses or gains. It would be interesting to know how much uh, these things would cost in monetary returns in the United States. Uh, uh, 
There is a, a figure, an assessment, that in the United States, the cost of uh, medical malpractice amounts to 10 percent of the total uh, total cost of medical care in the United States, in the country. Uh, these are data from the Howard uh, Legal School. There are different, so many different other assessments. But uh, generally, it turns around uh, the figure of uh, 55 billion dollars uh, as of uh, last uh, year. That is the cost of American malpractice aggregated. Now, last year, we've been talking about uh, unfair competition. That was our uh, subject matter. In this sense, the subject matter that we were discussing today is a logical continuation of that previous team. In a way, the situation in Russia is better than uh, in the United States because uh, Russia has a mandatory and universal medical uh, coverage uh, for every citizen. Uh, Americans don't have that as yet. Uh, this is a crucial context uh, for uh, passing legal judgment on medical mal malpractice. Alexei Mikhailovich was uh, recently speaking about that. This has to do not only uh, in terms of uh, practices of ADR or mediation or anything else. Uh, uh, this has to do uh, on the uh, overall picture of uh, medical practices in the country. Another key word is education. Uh, ed education uh, is uh, crucial uh, to uh, national well-being and the uh, state of health of uh, any industry. And we know that from uh, the quotation of Lenin, his uh, famous uh, education times three means uh, socialism and communism, something like that. Well, anyway, education is a continuous proje project, is a continuous activity for everyone and the entire society as a whole. Some say that the, as soon as the law will be passed, uh, uh, the uh, things will, uh, the chips will fall uh, into their places and uh, Russia will have a um, carry home uh, version of uh, malpractice legislation. I believe uh, this will only signal the beginning of uh, movement, because uh, beyond uh, legislation, there's education. Thank you very much for your attention. That's all I had to say. Thank you, Professor. Our time is up, or almost. Our final speaker is Yuri Mikhailovich Akulin. Professor Simons mentioned on several occasions alternative dispute resolution. Mr. Mikhailovich, uh, deals uh, with the subject matter of dispute resolution in uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce. He is an active member of uh, the local uh, medical insurance chapter in, this, in St. Petersburg. Thank you very much for microphone is off. Uh, thank you. 
We are very grateful uh, for the occasion to speak uh, before this audience at uh, this forum. Uh, we see so many uh, friends and uh, dear colleagues and our fellows. Uh, some of them are our friends, uh, some of them are new faces. I uh, hope this kind of exchange and communication will promote uh, uh, the subject matter. Thinking about uh, the difficulties of advancing uh, of medical law in our country, we uh, must understand uh, initially that the reformation of medical business, medical community, has started quite recently, in, 19, uh, in the uh, early 1990s. The transition from um, budget-driven uh, medical uh, coverage uh, to private-driven uh, and uh, insurance-driven, uh, insurance-based medical system means uh, that uh, there are leftovers and carryovers from the old system. There are aftershocks uh, from the transition. Therefore, in a way, we have a mix of system. <coughs> Part of the uh, transition uh, is uh, a lack uh, of um, proper knowledge uh, and the need uh, to educate. Right. So uh, uh, today, the role of the uh, medical law is uh, increasing all the time, and that's understandable because market relations in public health are developing, whether it is mandatory insurance or private uh, insurance, and thus the role of the uh, medical knowledge and uh, awareness uh, are extremely important. Uh, it's also necessary to say that the liability, any forms of liability, come when the uh, medical uh, staff, medical doctors are not well familiar with the legislation of Russia. So, although at the uh, uh, Youth Forum, I was saying that our legislation is big enough, is strong enough, and we can be even proud of it. Um, we can be proud of our constitution that contains Article 41 uh, and the law on um, uh, public health and uh, mandatory medical insurance. The um, enforcement of these laws, unfortunately, leaves a lot to be desired. And uh, I would like to say a few words about the equality. The civil code and all the laws, of, uh, the laws of Russia declare this equality between doctors and patients, but this equality is not exactly equal. What do I mean by that? A patient, according to our legislation, is a subject of law. And uh, a medical doctor is not a subject of law. Um, uh, a doctor has a lot of duties, a lot of responsibilities, and very limited rights. Patient uh, is, uh, is entitled to have quite a wide range of rights, and there is practically no responsibility of the patient. As a medical doctor and a lawyer, I understand that today patients should also be responsible uh, for compliance with what the doctor recommends. And we know uh, that uh, patients uh, uh, today, um, it happens so historically, um, it comes from budget uh, um, system, uh, actually uh, leads the doctor, so to speak. If we look at the experience of the Western countries, it's the medical doctor who leads the patient. And uh, uh, the next uh, uh, slide uh, has uh, uh, these uh, key word combination patient extremism. It's a rare case, but nonetheless, uh, we know it from practice. We are familiar with these cases. Lawyers uh, actively in, uh, integrate in the, the system of law, and uh, in St. Petersburg, there are whole firms that lock in the, work in the field, and Alexei says uh, they are looking for patients, and uh, uh, there is already some concerns uh, um, about the um, destiny of our doctors, in a way. 
So patients must have responsibility and duties. Patients must comply with the um, uh, regimen, and um, sometimes it's a problem with us. At the same time, well, of course, we need uh, to recognize that uh, um, uh, According to our information uh, and um, independent research, uh, the assessment of, uh, of the level of uh, assessment uh, is quite low. Um, as you can see over here, almost 50 percent uh, give rather low assessment of the medical uh, help they can get. And uh, here is this slide. Uh, and um, uh, this is an important aspect, and uh, obviously there are objective reasons for that. At the same time, look at uh, the following. Uh, just one uh, third of the patients would like to change their medical organization, and just two thirds are quite satisfied with the medical institution. And. Uh, notice the reasons uh, um, for the lack of confidence uh, in doctors in uh, the um, present-day public health system. We feel sorry sometimes for the Minister of uh, Public Health because they are very often attacked by the media. But I understand uh, quite well how difficult it is to satisfy everybody. There is so much that does not depend on the ministry. But anyway, what causes uh, this lack of confidence? Uh, the uh, insufficiency of medical experience, which is true of our system, true of foreign systems. Medical doctors cannot become experienced right away. Imperfection of medical science, another fact uh, that is to be considered all the time. And uh, for that reason, mistakes that occur not because of the doctor um, um, and um, harmful um, are not always associated with the particular doctors. Organizational problems, we understand very well that these exist. The minister understands this. There is a lot of these uh, type of problems. Risk, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the medical profession is uh, thought with risk. Alexei said that doctors are afraid, and even with us, they're afraid to, to risk. Uh, it would take uh, tr uh, trans transplantology. We're lagging behind in this sphere because the medical doctors are specialists in Transplantation are afraid of uh, surgery, and uh, um, uh, the medical community should be supported in that because the risk is always there. And um, of course, incidents and accidents in um, uh, medicine, uh, this is something that is very often written about, very often discussed, but again, without mistakes, uh, no progress can be uh, reached. How can we uh, reestablish this confidence and trust? Of course, through the improvement of legislation, through the mechanisms of pre-trial dispute resolution, and uh, we need uh, to take these uh, relations into the level of, uh, onto the level of economic relations and uh, on the basis of experience abroad, we can say that certain funds uh, cover the damages, and uh, I will say a few words about the new legislation. We think it's actually a new step towards improvement. Uh, this draft law um, on liability is important, but uh, there are still uh, uh, the injuries, there is harm that is beyond that, left beyond that draft law, and uh, there must be some other economic spheres that uh, cover it. So what do we mean by that? Well, of course, it's arbitration. Uh, well, of course, arbitration cannot cover absolutely everything um, in the relationship between doctors and uh, patients. But mediation in healthcare um, must be discussed separately. And of course, we uh, should apply foreign experience here. How can we uh, 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 protect the interests of patients and doctors? Well, of course, the uh, personal liability insurance, this is a very important important step, and the Association of um, um, Medical Law in St. Petersburg supports this project, this draft law, which we can find on the site of the Ministry uh, for Public Health. In this draft um, document, we can see a definition of the medical um, mistake, uh, a medical error. That's quite interesting. The legislators um, did not really dare how to define the medical error, whether it's action or lack of action. Um, 
which leads uh, to an adverse consequence with it, with outside the issue of the um, uh, responsibility of the medical institution. Well, I think uh, that's very good. We should promote this idea. And it seems to me that we are among the first to try and define what the medical error is. It's a draft document, of course, and uh, it needs to be further developed. Uh, in this draft law on um, medical insurance, uh, uh, there are different definitions, and in this uh, draft document, there are rather important issues. In Article 4, four uh, uh, medical organizations uh, uh, must um, um, ensure their medical uh, liability. That is very important because this provision pro protects the rights uh, of the patient and the doctor. And uh, in the draft law, there is an interesting uh, issue, uh, that of the Commission and its functioning. There is one thing here that we discussed together with Vladimir Dmitrievich at the Association. Commission should uh, include um, uh, representatives of the uh, forensic medicine. Uh, why is that important? Uh, um, we. We do believe that forensic uh, inquiry uh, should not be within uh, the system of public health. It should be taken out of it. Um, uh, uh, for more objective um, assessment of the harm inflicted uh, unintentionally by the medical doctor. So we believe that uh, this uh, commission uh, should be um, in the jurisdiction of the um, investigatory committee. Let's say I know that this is probably too dash a uh, decision, but at least it can be dis discussed. And here are some of the major legal problems uh, that our profession comes against. Uh, undeveloped institutes of the uh, dispute resolution, um, low level of lawyers in medical um, institutions, and it's un understandable. Uh, they're not very well paid, and it's um, not prestigious, uh, poor legal uh, training of the members, uh, uh, the representatives who uh, work in the insurance sphere, uh, the mm, uh, statutory documents contain a lot of mistakes. Uh, we could see that some of them are atrocious indeed. Uh, something needs to be done about that. And then disputes on the issues of forensic inquiry, of the quality of uh, medical assistance. And this is St. Petersburg University. Uh, here our association was born, and uh, the professors and lecturers are members of it. We began to develop in 1999. The first conference on medical war was held, beginning with, uh, uh, since uh, 2011, we're members of the International Association. We're proud of it, and uh, in 2011, we opened uh, the uh, master's course for uh, or in um, <clears throat> medical law, and uh, lawyers and uh, doctors studied together um, for two years, and annually we have uh, uh, conferences on the enforcement uh, monitoring. Uh, one was in uh, 2011, uh, then in June, uh, uh, then in 20, uh, no, they, we didn't have one in 2012. We will have the second one in July this year. And uh, the, we, have, we have annual uh, uh, forum on uh, medicine and law, and we teach our medical doctors and administrators um, how to apply different provisions. The law faculty um, is the um, uh, headquarters of our work, and we have a center of um, uh, medical insurance there and uh, medical law. Um, we would like to have a standard. We would like to turn it into the uh, basic element of the monitoring of enforcement. And uh, this year, uh, we will um, uh, have the first group of graduates, um, masters uh, from that particular, graduates of this particular course. Uh, this is a difficult situation to teach lawyers and doctors together. Uh, it's like, like a nuclear reaction, indeed. But uh, it's not Nonetheless, a very interesting experience. Just a couple of minutes about the monitoring of enforcement. Uh, 
uh, our uh, university has a contract with the Ministry of Justice on the monitoring of uh, enforcement in public health, and uh, we report on that. And here is uh, the group that I had and the experts, uh, which are here today, uh, respected people. Um, you can see Vladislav um, uh, uh, Arhipov, Alexey Garyanov, and uh, you can see the names, they're all here. Vadim Petrov and Marina um, Nikonova. And the priority trend for monitoring is observance of legislation, contractual practice in healthcare, electronic document circulation, uh, clinical tests, uh, law enforcement, monitoring of law enforcement practice in the system of obligatory medical insurance, criminal responsibility in the healthcare. And these are proposals of our association on development of the medical law. And we have to recognize that the legal aspects of the activity of medical staff became one of the main trends in uh, the life of the city, and health protection and law is one of the main trends of activity of the state. We have to organize training uh, for officials in medical law. We have to form the database under the Association of the Medical Law. Um, to introduce qualification exams on medical law at uh, our bachelor's uh, pamphlet exam to train lawyers at medical institutions at, uh, at state university to start publication uh, of the information on medical law and to expand cooperation and to set up the working group under the legal forum. It would be good if there would be a permanent group of experts. And to conclude this slide, from our annual conference. You can see it in the premises of the law departments. These are our guests from the Health uh, Committee Territorial Fund of uh, Obligatory Medical Insurance. The Investigator Committee attends our sessions, law enforcement bodies. Mr. Shishlov, uh, who is dealing with human rights, was uh, also present, and a lot of specialists in medical law. These are our ex experts who are present here. We're happy to welcome them again and uh, I think that we are also going to take picture this year and we are uh, happy that we are such an association. We invite you to the conference uh, at the Law Department to be held on November 15-16 and we are happy that we have come here together today. Thank you very much, Yuri Mikhailovich. As far as I understand the audience, will uh, not uh, be lucky since we don't ask questions, but because we are behind the schedule, please concentrate on the m most burning and brief questions, please. No microphone, no translation. Professor Timofeev, Professor Timofeev of the uh, uh, Church of St. Petersburg, uh, I would like to have a brief, uh, brief answer uh, from our colleagues from foreign states. The criteria of a grounded risk or well-founded risk, what criteria do you apply in your practice? One, two, three. Do you understand the question is rather difficult? In Russia, we have our own. Uh, opinion, and I would like to hear your opinion, please, if possible. A criteria of uh, ground, uh, grounds for the risk. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm not sure it is an answer to your question. Um, about risks, foreseeability, I would say. So the foreseeability of an event, of a risk. Uh, the harmfulness is one of the conditions. There are quite a number of, uh, of possibilities, but foreseeability and harmfulness and severity of risk, these are conditions which uh, have been used in, at least in the Netherlands, but I think that is not unique to the Netherlands. Briefly. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I would... Uh perhaps say that if we're talking about a tort case for damages, then the exam is always uh, the negligence exam. So was the behavior a reasonable one? 
If I'm referring to other aspects, that is disciplinary or criminal cases, sometimes the court is looking for more than just unreasonableness. They're looking for a very severe unreasonable behavior. And in these cases, I believe that the risk will be factored into the overall consideration. Uh, Irina Peskov from Nizhny Novgorod. Um, often uh, we have been mentioning uh, uh, patients' extremism and protection in medicine, and I have a feeling that all our patients are super protected, and the representatives of medical institutions are under a certain pressure. And I would like to hear the representative of Netherlands today gave some statistical data. What number of medical uh, mistakes are meant? What number of deaths occur, and whether the association, which is uh, present here, or representatives of other institutions, any statistical data concerning Russia, what uh, number of uh, deaths are caused by medical errors or harm uh, to health and life, and what number of uh, judicial cases initiated by the patients were considered by the courts of law, at least approximate date. Uh, Igor Mikhailovich, unfortunately. Unfortunately, such uh, information is not available. Uh, personally, I don't have such data. And I think that the healthcare ministry also doesn't have this information. We start collecting this information because it is highly important. Probably Vladimir knows, but I am not aware of any statistics concerning these serious figures. We are not speaking about uh, patient extremism as a phenomenon that is just of the option of relationships, undoubtedly. So the statistics is being collected, and we uh, uh, law enforcement bodies and make it possible for us to receive these statistics. We have representatives at our conference, and they submit annual statistics to us, the number of cases, what were the court decisions, and so on. Of course, that information is available for St. Petersburg. I think, as for Russia, such statistics, uh, such statistics is uh, not available so far. As far as I understand, we didn't have such a theme today in respect of the patient's extremism. Uh, but our practice uh, shows, and I have investigated about 2,000 criminal and uh, uh, cases and uh, civil cases. Mr. Stankov is a representative of the Association of Medical Law, and he teaches at St. Petersburg University. I know only one case from the practice, and the patient uh, who was uh, showing extremism was a surgeon, and that was a simple well, case. Uh, he was operated uh, in case of oncology, by, and he used BF glue uh, to put on the wound. And of course, uh, uh, there was purification. Only the court of law, when they calculated the damage, they told him, why uh, do you have 20 bottles of that glue BF6? So that was only one case. I would like to add a couple of words concerning the numbers of cases under the project of monitoring of law enforcement practice. We are trying now to generalize the practice, to analyze the number of cases. And I cannot give any precise data concerning the total number of cases, but I can tell you that there is a serious trend to increasing number of cases, at least criminal cases. It is not recorded now, such a tendency. A last question. I have a question uh, to Andre. In your presentation, you mentioned medical errors as a criteria of making uh, the doctors responsible. Can you tell me, in your current legislation or in your scientific investigation, can you see any difference between the medical error and negligence? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, a very intriguing question. Um, 
and I'm not sure I do know the answer. Um, these, the, the figures I gave, very rough, very general, um, only about unavoidable uh, death, whether it was the individual physician or it was in team, the, the entire team uh, that was uh, responsible for it. Uh, it just figured out that there were, have, been, uh, um, have been made some mistakes which were uh, avoidable and also, well, negligible, uh, I would say, but, but it hasn't come so far. This was purely based on the research of medical uh, files. It is not known, according to, to my research, what has happened in, as a second step with these physicians, with these hospitals, whether there was a criminal a disciplinary of, uh, or civil liability case. I don't know, actually. This was purely intended aim. The aim of this research was focusing how can we improve the quality of care. It was not so interested uh, in civil liability issues. It, the, the conclusions were, were focusing on how to improve the quality of care in these hospitals. And that, that was the main issue. So uh, I'm sorry, I, I cannot give that, that answer. Yeah? But you should do it again. I hope you are satisfied. Thank you very much. I would like to thank all the participants. Summing up the results of our session, I would like to say a few words. Uh, it seemed to me that we had a very good discussion and probably following the style that is quite characteristic for the doctors is better to prevent than to treat afterwards and thus the approach which we have been currently uh, discussing is to prevent the responsibility of the doctors uh, not uh, to analyze uh, the legal grounds for making them uh, responsible afterwards. I'm glad that we had such a fruitful discussion. I would like to thank all the speakers and all those who participated in this section. Thank you.